Hey, God bless you. Welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for today's video. I know that God is going to speak to your life. The theme of today's video is going to be this. The devil wants to keep you outside of God's presence. So make sure you pay attention. Watch this video the whole way through. I know that it's going to be a great blessing to your life. And do me a favor. If this video blesses you, make sure you subscribe. Turn on those post notifications so that you can be alerted every time we post a brand new video. So let's get into it. The devil wants to keep you outside of God's presence. So remember, the devil wants to keep you outside of God's presence. So I'm here with my brother Edgar, and hopefully I know that God's going to speak to your life because there's a lot of people who are feeling spiritually pressed down, spiritually oppressed, spiritually crippled by the devil, and the devil has you mentally handicapped, and he has you stagnant, and he has you comfortable with being outside of the presence of God. And we want to read you something from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Pay attention. I know that this story is going to bless your life. It's going to be talking about a man who was born crippled. And pay attention because spiritually speaking, there's a lot of people who are already comfortable with being spiritually mm. crippled. Look what the Bible says. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. We're going to be reading and we're going to be pausing to explain. Look what the Bible says. Now, Peter and John were going up at the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, which is 3 p.m. A man lame from birth was being carried, who they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called beautiful to ask alms of those entering the temple. So we want to pause right there. This man who's born crippled is going to represent in this video Christians who are already content with being spiritually stagnant. And something we can see in this story is that this man was content with not entering the temple. He was content with just being outside the temple. See, there's a lot of Christians who are content with the place that they find themselves in. You're not experiencing the presence of God. You're not experiencing the freedom of God. You're not experiencing the victory of God. You're just content with being close to the presence of God. And this man, the Bible says, that somebody taught him how to be like this. Somebody showed him how to be like this. The Bible says that they would come and bring him and sit him down outside of the temple every single day. And all he would do is just ask for alms. There's a lot of people like that. Somebody has shown you how to be spiritually stagnant. It might be somebody you looked up to. It might be somebody that you look at as another Christian, a fellow peer in the faith, and maybe they're spiritually stagnant, and they've shown you how to just be a carnal person. They've shown you how to just be content with being close to the presence of God, but really never experiencing the presence of God. Is there anything you want to share on that? No, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to keep reading to you something. Look what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says. Verse 2, a man lame from birth was being carried, who they lay daily at the gate of the temple that is called beautiful to ask alms of those who were entering the temple. So remember, he was outside the temple. He was content with just asking for money. He didn't really want to enter the presence of God, not because that wasn't a desire of his, but just because he had already grown comfortable with being outside the temple. Don't let the devil make you feel comfortable with being outside of the presence of God. But look at this. Look at the grace and look at the mercy of Jesus Christ in the life of this man. Verse 3, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, Peter and John, disciples of Jesus, this is after the crucifixion and ascension of Jesus, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. See, he didn't know that he was going to ask these apostles for money, but he didn't know that in return he was going to receive the true riches. I want to tell you something. The Bible says that God has good plans for you, plans to bless you, plans to prosper you, plans for a hope and a future, says the Lord. See, this man was asking for money, but God was about to give him true riches. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John. And he said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Same thing with you as you're watching this video. I want to tell you something. Look at us. God wants to do something in your life. It is not a coincidence that you clicked on this video. It is not a mistake that you clicked on this video. God wants to do something in your life. He doesn't want you to just be happy being away from the presence of God, kind of close to it. No, 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 no. He wants you to experience his presence. He wants you to experience his freedom. He wants you to experience his victory and his joy. So Peter and John said, look at us. This man looked thinking he was going to get some money, but look what the Bible keeps saying. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Look at that. 
That's what a lot of people are looking for. A lot of people are just content with things that don't really satisfy. But Peter and John said, I don't have silver and I don't have gold, but what I do have, that's what the Christian life's about. Amen. Apostle Paul said this, the Christian life is not just about words, fancy words. Oh, man, you see a lot of preachers nowadays, man, they know how to preach. You see a lot of Christians nowadays, all oh, they talk about grace and mercy, and I love grace and mercy. We all amen, need grace amen. and mercy, but you have so many preachers nowadays, oh, they know how to talk, and they know how to speak, and they know how to manipulate words, and they know how to make people go woo and ah. But look what Peter said. He said, I don't have silver. I don't have gold. I don't have razzle-dazzle, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and you walk. Know, that's another point that we can see yeah. that he says, I don't have silver and gold. In other words, I'm not coming to you with what you want. E I'm not coming to you with what you want to hear or maybe what you're expecting. And I love that part right in uh, verse 4 when Peter directed his gaze at him and, it said, and he says, look at us. That's right. He demanded his attention and that's how God does to us. He speaks to us and we need to pay attention. We need to be ready, willing, and available for when God speaks to our hearts to pay attention. The Bible says here that the man fixed his eyes on them expecting something. He had a, a heart of expectancy. He had a he was paying attention to see what is what are these guys going to bring me? What are they going right. to give me? In the same way, we got to be that way when we read God's word. When we go to church, we got to pay attention not only to the message or to the preacher, but we got to be paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing, what the Spirit of God is speaking to us and what He's speaking to the church and what God is saying. When we go to church, we have to have expectancy in our heart. When we read the Bible, we need to be expecting something. And guess what? God's not always going to come to you with what you expect That's right. and what, what you want. That's right. But He's going to come to you with something and He's going to speak to you and He's going to bless your life greater than even what you want. Like the Bible says, my ways are not your ways, says the Lord, and my thoughts are not your thoughts, but my ways are higher. So when we expect something from God, it's not always going to be what we want, but it's going to be something even greater, a greater Amen. blessing to us. Amen. See, you might have clicked on this video. Let me see what they're talking about. Maybe the thumbnail got your attention. Maybe the title got your attention. You might be a person that doesn't even believe in God. You might be a person that just clicked on this video just because you're curious to see what we're going to to hear what we're going to say. But I want to tell you something. God is telling you right now, look at us. He wants to do something in your life. He doesn't just want you to be close to the presence of God. He wants you to experience the presence of God. See, a lot of Christians are distracted, but God wants you to look at him. He wants to do something in your life. So look what the Bible says. Peter and John said, we don't have silver and gold. Remember, what does this represent? A lot of Christians nowadays, they act like they got the presence of God. They act like they're filled with the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of Christians really are not. And God doesn't want you to be faking that anymore. God actually wants you to be filled with his presence. And it's simple. You don't have to be the most perfect person. The Bible says about Elijah that he prayed that it didn't rain. And the Bible says that when he prayed, it didn't rain for three years. And the Bible says in the book of James that he was a man with the like passions just like us. You know what that says about Elijah? He had enough faith to pray. And when he prayed, it happened. And then the Bible tells us in the book of James, he prayed and it happened and he wasn't special. There was nothing different about him, but he prayed with faith. Right. See, God wants you to experience his presence you don't need to be the most perfect, flawless person. You just need to believe God's word and you can begin to experience his presence. The Bible says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. So remember, he was lame from birth. Look what verse 7 says. Amen. He's expecting to receive money, but he's about to receive a blessing, a miracle, deliverance, freedom. Just like God wants you to receive victory in your life. Look what the Bible says. And he took him by the right hand. The right hand in the Bible is a symbol of strength. The Bible says that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. And he took him by the right hand. And he raised him up. Now hold him up. He was crippled. The Bible says he took him by the right hand and he raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Let me tell you something. Amen, amen. God wants to begin to make you strong. Not tomorrow. Not in an hour. God wants to begin to make you strong right immediately. now. If you can just believe these words. That God actually wants you to begin to experience his presence. His freedom. His victory. And not just be content with being close to it or hearing about it. No, 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 no. God just doesn't want you to hear about it or be close to it or just be content with being close to the presence of God. No, he wants you to experience it. The Bible says that he took his hand and immediately his ankles were made strong. Look what does the Bible keep, say, keep saying? And leaping up, he stood up and began to walk and entered the temple with them. Look at this. 
Prior, he was outside the temple just begging. Now, he's able to enter the temple with Peter, with John, experiencing the presence of God. See, spiritually speaking, I want you to extend your right hand of faith to God right now and tell him, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Lord, I know about you. I know about your presence, but I'm not experiencing the victory, the freedom, the joy that you want me to experience. Extend that right hand of faith and tell the Lord, Lord, I receive you. I have faith in you. Lord, do something in my life. And he wants to begin to strengthen you. Not tomorrow, today. And look what yeah. does the Bible keeps saying. And leaping up, he stood up and began to walk and entered the temple with them. Walking and leaping and guess what? Praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate. They said, hey, isn't this that man who was always backsliding? Isn't that that person that was always falling in sin? Isn't that that person that was always depressed, oppressed, filled with anxiety? Isn't that that person who was spiritually crippled? Isn't that that man who was sitting outside the temple always begging? Now he's no longer crippled. Now he's leaping and he's praising God and he's filled with joy. Why? Why? Because he bumped into the presence of God. And not only bumped into it, but when they extended the right hand to him, he extended his right hand. That's all you need to do. That's all we need to do. God's right hand is extended to us, spiritually speaking, through his son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for you on the cross. He paid the price for all your Amen. sins, to wash you, to cleanse you, to free you, to deliver you. He's already extended his right hand. What you need to do, what we all need to do, is extend our right hand, spiritually speaking, back to him, and he will raise us up. Amen. You know, that reminds me of when Jesus was preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. The Bible says that when he finished preaching that sermon, that he was walking down the hill, and a leper met him. A leper came up to him and said, Teacher, Rabbi, he said, I know that if you're willing, you can make me clean. The Bible says that Jesus reached out his hand and said, I am willing Amen. be made clean. God is willing to give you the victory. God wants to give you the victory. God wants to bless you. God wants to forgive your sins. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to rebuke the enemy from your life. He wants to bless you. You just have to reach out to him. God is willing. Amen, amen. And look what the Bible keeps saying. The Bible says, And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. You know what? Let me tell you something. A lot of people, they're going to see other Christians in a certain spiritual state, and they're going to get comfortable with seeing that person like that. But let me tell you something. If you're going through something in your life, and you want God to do something, to give you victory, to give you freedom, to give you deliverance, to give you strength, to fill you with that hope that the Bible promises, that Jesus promises, God is extending his right hand towards you. And all you need to do is extend yours in faith back to him. And the Bible says that all the people were looking at him in amazement. See, this man was outside the temple, never experiencing the power of God. But when he received that right hand that was extended to him, his ankles, his feet were strengthened, and now he's able to experience God's presence, and everybody is seeing it. See, let me tell you a story. When my father, before he was a Christian 29 years ago, people used to see him and say, he's never going to change. He's never going to change. But one day, God extended his right hand towards Amen. my father, spiritually speaking. And my father humbled himself and extended the right hand of faith back to God. And guess what? It's been 29 years that the Lord Jesus has done a miracle in my family's life. I want to tell you something. The devil wants to keep you away from the presence of God. But God is extending his right hand of grace to you, of mercy to you. And like Peter and John said, silver and gold I don't have. God doesn't have a lot of words of razzle-dazzle. God doesn't want to razzle-dazzle you. God doesn't want to just amaze you with his auditory skills. God actually wants to do something in your life. God actually wants to give you the freedom that you read about in that Bible. Amen. So I want to invite you, humble yourself to God. Do what that man did. Extend your right hand of faith towards God. Tell him, Lord, here I am. I believe your word. I trust you, Lord. Begin to do a good work in me today and extend that right hand of faith. Take a step of faith. God wants to begin to do freedom in your life. Fill you with strength. Fill you with his peace. Fill you with his joy. Is there anything you want to say? Man, this, this no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jesus. I hope this video blessed your life. Remember, the devil wants to keep you away from the presence of God, but God wants to begin to strengthen you, not tomorrow, right now. All you need to do is surrender yourself to him. Trust him. He's going to do a good work in your life. God bless you. Have a blessed day. God bless.